uh, Michael has nicely pointed out the, uh, the goals of the primary type A procedure we're all familiar with. We all know that it's not an easy task in the middle of the night typically. Uh, God knows why they're always in the middle of the night. And he has also nicely pointed out the two major goals we want to achieve. So number one is we want to definitely treat or get rid of malt perfusion. And secondly, we want to get a, a rid of these uh, uh, thing that is called Dane. And honestly, I wasn't aware of that fact until a couple of months ago. I think this paper will uh, were there in the literature since ever, but somehow we're a little bit overlooked, I guess. So now we're coming to the second part uh, of the presentation, which is, uh, where I would like to show you the concept behind the AMDS device and how it should be used or can be used. I'm going to show you a video uh, later on. So the indication clearly is um, uh, type A uh, dissection, not the chronic versions because that the membrane is too so stiff to widen the true lumen, but the acute onset is, um, uh, these are the patients where it can be used. And uh, the idea is, uh, to uh, firstly seal the so-called danes, so the, uh, the tears that are in, induced by conventional suture lines, and secondly, by uh, widening the true lumen to get rid of um, static or dynamic uh, malperfusion. Uh, on the upper image, you can see the helical uh, non-covered self-expandable stent, which has quite large cell cells, so it can be sit, uh, sitting in front of the supraortic vessels without any impairment of the flow. Also, you could do a secondary intervention through these meshes if required later on. And then you can, the downside, on the, uh, the lower picture, you can see the delivery system. It's basically relatively simple. It can be used over a wire, but it's not mandatory because it has a pigtail-shaped uh, uh, tip. So let's come to the uh, mode of action. So number one is we want to get rid of these so-called Danes, so these proximal new entry uh, sites that you induce when doing a conventional uh, open anastomosis or hemiarch. And we all think that it does not happen if we do it because we have a medicalist uh, technique, but if you uh, believe the literature and this is not true and it's going to happen to all of us in roughly 50 to 70 percent, and it has been shown this is clearly associated for so-called negative remodeling uh, in midterm or long-term follow-up. So how should, we, uh, how should this device help you in getting rid of this stain? Uh, so number one, it has an integrated felt that is going to be inside of the order. And then the self-expandable stand is going to compress the layers. And this seems to be the, uh, the, the mechanism behind uh, the concept. And it seems to work pretty well. I'm going to show you some data in a minute. And the second uh, task is definitely to open up the uh, true lumen uh, to restore blood flow, uh, flow and hopefully to get rid of all downstream um, uh, mouth perfusion issues. So coming back again to the Dane issue. So on the left side, you can see the standard kind of sandwich anastomosis. And typically you do have a felt on the outside. Some of us also like to use the felt on the inside or pericardial strip or whatever to kind of uh, buttress the stitches, but still you will never be able to avoid these micro tears that then can uh, pressurize the false lumen, which is the beginning of uh, the so-called negative uh, remodeling over time. So how can the device help you to seal this area? So number one, it of course also has a felt, but most importantly, just distal to your classic anastomosis, you will have the compression in, uh, induced by the self-expandable stand, which will compress the layers. And this seems to be quite effective in sealing this particular area. And number one, this is obvious, you wanna widen and open up the true lumen. Uh, this can be, it can happen in a more gradual fashion. So it could be that immediately after implant, uh, implant, you have something like seen in the middle. And then over time, you hopefully will see a nicely completely healed arch and ideally obliterated false lumen in the descending. So this is one of these ideal CT scans. This is what you should expect from using an AMDS device in an acute type A uh, 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 setting. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse pointing can you see that? Yes, okay. So this is the proximal sandwich anastomosis. This is free of any of those uh, entries, so no Dane. And then you can see a nicely healed arch. The um, uh, membranes come, came together very nicely. And only in the most distal uh, um, part of the stand, you see some residual uh, uh, false lumen. And obviously, uh, distal to the stand end, you'll see the typical residual dissection. 
but without hopefully any further downstream malperfusion issues. So how do we know that this device is actually effective? So the most robot data that has been uh, collected uh, uh, as of today is based on the um, multi-center international uh, DARTS-1 trial. This trial was designed to get CE mark approval for the device and um, uh, it was performed in some Canadian and some German centers. So uh, in total, 47 patients were included, always type A, mean age 63, 55% of those patients presented with some sort of malperfusion. The implant time was recorded with less than five minutes. Uh, 30 day mortality was quite, I would say, comparable to most uh, high volume uh, center results, 13%, slightly on the lower side than what you will see in the uh, literature. Sealing of the Dane, this is important, was achieved in 90%. So it did a tremendous job in sealing these uh, new uh, entry sites at the distal anastomosis. New post-operative stroke, quite comfortable, uh, quite favorable, 6.5%, quite good. 0% of spinal cord injury, so this is obvious. This is a non-covered stand, so it's uh, uh, different to a frozen elephant. It can, simply cannot happen. Uh, the device seemed to be able to relieve the malperfusion, either dynamic or static ones, in 95% of patients. Art showed positive remodeling in all patients, and a complete arch force lumen obliteration of thrombosis was seen in roughly 75%, and the descending order showed positive remodeling in 80%, and there was a thing, uh, was none uh, device-related uh, event reported, so no descending rupture in any of the nasty stuff. So quite uh, promising data, but clearly uh, a small group of patients. However, if we have a look now in the CT follow-up, and this extends up to two years now, you will see on the right side, uh, each column is uh, representing a different aortic uh, zone. So the column num uh, named A is for the arch, and then B1 is proximal descending, and so on. And if you just focus on A, which is the arch, this is the one you wanna kind of treat when entering through a sonotomy. Uh, then you can see that uh, in regard to total arch diameter, there was uh, no growth at all. False lumen also was, uh, uh, was uh, decreasing and true lumen was not increasing. So you could draw the conclusion from this uh, CT follow-up data that it was super effective in uh, healing the arch. In V1, which is the proximal um, uh, descending, uh, there was some yellow patient, meaning uh, that there was no decrease, and there was only one patient which is here representing with that red one, which showed uh, total diameter growth. And this was due to a pressurized false lumen flow through a dissected left subclavian, and this patient was uh, treated by interventional methods, so they uh, recoiled the subclavian, the carotid subclavian bypass, and therefore minimized the true flow, the flow into the true lumen, uh, the false lumen, sorry, and this patient did not show any signs of uh, iteration during follow-up CT scan. And if we have a look, a quick look on the overall survival curve, you can see the blue curve, this is the overall survival, it's the usual pattern, uh, of course, there is some perioperative mortality, but then it flattens out, so no uh, further events uh, after the procedure. And the red one is freedom from aortic-related uh, mortality, which was none so far, fortunately.